Let us prepare ourselves as we sing our pre-service song. So while sitting, we will be singing, Give thanks to God for good is He. Um, it can be found in hymn number 284. Again, give thanks to God for good is He. Hymn number 284, we will be singing verses 1 to verse 3. Tayo po lahat ay tumayo. And as we continue to acknowledge God's presence, may our hearts be ready as we are being called to worship by our God, by our Lord in Psalms 136 verses 1 to 3. Psalm 136 verse 1 to 3. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his steadfast love endures forever. And for our invocation, we are being reminded of how weak we are. And how essential it is to acknowledge that we are to fully depend on God in our lives and so become and so come before Him in reverence to His almighty power and sovereign will. That's why, dear congregation, we lift our eyes to the hills. Where does our help come f comes from? Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And as we come before him, we are also greeted by the Lord pronouncing his blessings to us. From Galatians 1, verse 3 to 5, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, only to you and you alone belong the praise and worship of your saints. 
And as we continue to remain in your presence and to be with your people and to find rest, may you be with us and grant us your grace, your mercy, and your love. May you, O oh God, sustain us as we worship you during this Vesper service. And may you open our hearts and give us joy. And may your word be sweet and delightful to our souls as we receive it by faith alone in Christ. Have your way, O Lord, and may you be pleased with the praise of your people who are ransomed by your blood of your son, by the blood of your son, only by grace and renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please lead us this afternoon, our great shepherd and king, and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And as we now sing our song of praise, let us all together sing, Come all you people, bless our God. It can be found in hymn number 120. Again, come all ye people, bless our God. Hymn number 120, we'll be singing verses 1 to verse 4. Verse 1. Come all ye people, bless our God, and tell His glorious praise abroad who holds our souls in life who never lets our feet be moved and though our faith he of has proved upholds us in the strife we come with offerings to his house and here we pay the solemn vows we uttered in distress to him are all we dedicate to him we wholly consecrate the lives his mercies bled verse 3 come here all ye that fear the lord while i with grateful heart record what god has done for me I cry to him in deep distress, and now his wondrous grace I bless, for he has set me free. The Lord who turns away the plea of those who love iniquity has answered my request. He has not turn away my prayer his grace and love he makes me share his name be ever blessed please take your seat and as we go now to our reading of catechism uh, this is not only to point out our reform heritage and even reform orthodoxy uh, but does, it also summarizes the scripture uh, by the way of expounding the law and gospel and in turn it turn, explains to us how the spirit convicts us of our sin reveals the need for a savior and points us to the grace found in our lord jesus christ so please turn with me to heidelberg catechism lord's day 24. Uh, this is found in page 31 at the back portion of your Psalter hymnal. Again, uh, Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 24. So I will read the question and uh, we will all in unison read the answer. Okay? Question 62. Why can't the good we do make us right with God or at least help make us right with Him? Answer. Because the righteousness which can pass God's scrutiny must be entirely perfect and must in every way measure up to the divine law. Even the very best we do in this life is imperfect and stained with sin. Question 63. How can you say that the good we do does, doesn't earn anything when God promises to reward it in this life and the next? Answer. This reward is not earned. It is a gift of grace. And in question 64, But doesn't this teaching make people indifferent and wicked? Answer, 
No, it is impossible for those grafted into Christ by true faith not to produce fruits of gratitude. So after this, we are now going to our congregational prayer. And let us pray in uh, adoration, contrition, and uh, thanksgiving and supplication to the one true God. So let us bow down our heads and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are now uh, before your throne of grace with hearts overflowing with gratitude and reverence uh, for your boundless mercy and unmerited favor which you granted to your children. Uh, Lord, we praise you for the precious gift of justification that you granted by faith alone, which you provided for us in Christ. We acknowledge that uh, our understanding uh, before you is not based on our merits or works, but uh, solely on the perfect righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ, imputed to us through faith. O oh Lord, we are humbled by the knowledge that despite our grievous sins and our corruption, Yet you have mercifully provided a way for us to be reconciled to you. And through your Son, in his life, death, and resurrection, we are declared righteous. Not because of anything that we have done, but entirely because of your sovereign grace. And Father, we recognize and thank you and that our best works are filthy rags before your holy standard, before the law. And uh, no human effort can achieve the perfection required by your divine law. And we thank you that our uh, justification and the pardon of our sin is only based on the righteousness of your Son, which we receive through faith. And we pray that you continue to strengthen this faith which you gave to us, that we may continuously trust in the finished work of Christ and have the rest in the freedom and joy that comes from being justified by your grace. Lord, we praise you for the work of your Holy Spirit in our lives, producing good works as a fruit of our faith and the marks of grace in us. And we ask that your Spirit continually sanctify us, conforming us more and more in the image of Christ. And please enable us to live lives of gratitude and obedience. Not as a means of, uh, to earn your favor, but a response to this, to this grace which we have received. And Lord, we are grateful that the true faith uh, cannot fail to produce good works. So help us to walk in holiness, knowing that our good works, although it is imperfect and tainted by sin, it is an act of gratitude towards your goodness. And Lord, may our lives bear evidence of your saving power demonstrating genuine love for you and for our neighbors. And we ask for strength in doing these good works, not for our glory, but to you alone, O Lord, as a display of your grace at work within us. So, Father, we thank you for the promise that the rewards for our good works are gifts of your grace. Help us to have the rest in this assurance knowing that our good works are not in vain, but that you, in your goodness, you choose to bless and reward your children. And let this promise motivate us to serve you with joyful hearts and always mindful that our service is a response to the grace that you have given to us. So Lord, please guard our hearts against any inclination, any temptation towards self-righteousness. Remind us continually that our justification in Christ produces in us humility and that our good works are evidence of saving faith, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And keep us from pride that uh, would have us to trust in our own righteousness and even from complacency that would have us neglect the pursuit of holiness. So Father, we ask your continued guidance and strength as we seek to live out this truth. Keep us steadfast in our faith, ever de dependent on your grace, and eager to honor you in all that we do. And may our lives glorify your name, our refuge in Christ, and pointing others to the hope that we have in you. Help us, O Lord, to cultivate a heart of humility and gratitude. 
may we always be aware of our dependence on your grace and be filled with thanksgiving for the salvation that we have in Christ. And let this life of gratitude be dependent and evident in our lives as we serve you and others. So we pray for our church that we may proclaim this truth, showing the world the wondrous reality of a life transformed by grace. Help us to support and encourage one another in our walk of faith and encouraging each other to love and to do good deeds. So in our worship, O Lord, may we always remember to give you the glory that is due to your name. And let our hearts be continually turned towards you in adoration and praise and recognizing that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And may our worship, even at this moment, be marked with reverence and reflecting your holiness of you, the one who we worship. And as we go through even in our trials and challenges, each in our lives, Lord help us to remember that our justification and even our progress in sanctification are secure in Christ. Give us the strength to endure, knowing that our suffering produces perseverance. And our hope, even for the future, does not put us to shame because your promises your people will be fulfilled just as you did in Christ and finally Lord uh, we long for the day when our faith will be sight and we will behold your glory and until that day we pray you to keep us faithful steadfast always abounding in good works and knowing that in you our labor and our love for one another is not in vain and all this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And right now as we go to our offering, uh, we are always reminded at every Lord's Day that this is an act of thankfulness and thanksgiving to the Lord. And we do it as a grateful response uh, to God's bountiful goodness to His children. And uh, we can read this reminder uh, doing this offering and good works from Galatians 6, 9-10. Galatians 6, 9-10, to it says, And let, uh, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So let us pray for our offering and thanksgiving. And gracious Father, our hearts are full of gratitude. Uh, acknowledging that every good and perfect gift comes from you, uh, including especially this saving faith that you granted to us. We thank you for your abundant blessing and the privilege of being stewards of your resources that you give to us. And as we bring our offerings, uh, we do it as an act of worship, as we recognize your sovereign provision and uh, expressing our gratitude to you. So Lord, uh, grant us the grace to give joyfully and willingly, uh, knowing that uh, you love a uh, cheerful giver. May our offerings be used to support our local congregation and guide us to be faithful stewards in using these resources wisely for the advancement of your kingdom and the glory of your name. So bless these gifts, Father, that they may bring honor to your holy name. Strengthen our uh, help to support one another, reflecting the love and grace that we have received in Christ. All of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, and now for the reading of God's Word, I invite everyone to please stand. And the Word of God is the primary means. This is the primary means of grace to His people. And this is the highlight. The emphasis of our public worship. And by preaching the Word of God, the Holy Spirit powerfully applies the Scriptures to save God's people from their sins. And uh, even for true believers, this is also the means to strengthen our faith. So please open your Bibles and uh, let us read first from the Old Testament coming from Isaiah 64, verses 5 to 12. Again, Isaiah 64, 5 to 12. Please pray with me, with your eyes. 
So you meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins uh, we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of your, our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our Father. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation, our holy and beautiful house, where our fathers placed you, has been burned by fire, and all our pleasant places have become ruins. Will you restrain yourself at these things, O Lord? Will you keep silent and afflict us so terribly? And now we are going to the New Testament, and let us read from Luke 18, 9-14. So for New Testament, let's read from Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. And I will read, He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. So two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And for the last passage in John 15, 1 to 11, John 15, verses 1 up to 11. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. And these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So brothers and sisters, this is the word of God. And for our song of preparation, let us now sing, Not What My Hands Have Done. This is found in hymn 389. We're going to sing stanzas 1 to 3. Hymn 
389 stanzas 1 to 3. And po, magandang hapon po sa atin muli. And um, this afternoon, we will be having a sermon delivery coming from Reverend George Van Popta. Ito po ay originally been reached sa Ancaster Canadian Reformed Church. And it was uh, last 2003, July 6th of 2003. Ayan po. Pag pinag-usapan po natin yung good works, when we talk about good works, tulad ng narinig din natin kanina, very consistent yung message even in the morning. When we talk about good works at kung ano yung lugar nito sa atin, marami tayong pwedeng marinig. Marami tayong naririnig sa iba-ibang sides. Kasi we know na mayroong mga exchanges, may mga debates, may mga arguments pagdating sa ano ba yung lugar or role ng good works sa isang Kristiyano. Kasi we will notice na may dalawa kasing extremes pagdating sa ganitong view. May dalawang extremes pagdating sa works of man. The one extreme is yung sinasabi nila na ikaw ay mag- maliligtas depende sa kung paano ka sumusunod sa law of God. You would, they, they claim na you can be saved depending on how you obey or how you keep the law of God. And the other is extreme is that Yung pangalawa naman, sinasabi nila na pwede kang ma-save pero it doesn't matter of what you do. Pwede ka rin gumawa ng pagkakamali at hindi lang pagkakamali. Pwede ka magkasala. Because the more you do that you sin, the more that grace of, that, that the grace of God abounds at nakikita sa buhay mo. So yun yung dalawang extremes na nakikita natin when it comes to the view of good works. Mas kilala natin sila sa tinatawag na legalists tsaka antinomians. So yun yung mas kilala natin or mas 
alam natin pagdating sa ganitong view. At yung dalawang extremes na to, it continuously contradicts themselves or each other. Kasi yung isa kiniklaim nila, for example, yung mga legalist, sinasabi nila na ang lahat ng tumutulog sa tumata tum, nabubulol ako. Lahat ng tumutulog sa sa mga uh, sa kanila ay walang pagkilala sa banal na utos ng Diyos. Yun yung claim ng mga legalist na masyadong minamaliit ng mga tao yung mga hindi naniniwala sa paniniwala nila. Minamaliit nila yung salita ng Diyos. Yung kabilang side naman is that sinasabi nila na ang tumutuligsa sa paniniwala nila ay bulag at naniniwala na kaya nilang iligtas ang sarili nila sa pambamagitan ng pagsunod sa kautosan ng Diyos. Yun yung dalawang extremes na nakikita natin pagdating sa legalists at pagdating sa antinomians. Pero pag titignan natin yung scriptures, mga kapatid, if we would be the one looking at the scriptures, do natin makikita na hindi tayo dapat sumunod sa kahit na sino sa kanilang dalawa. Hindi tayo dapat umayon sa kung ano yung tinuturo nila o pinapaniwalaan nila. Kasi we are not saved but by our good works. That's, that's the truth. We can never be saved by our good works done in accordance with the law of God. It's not enough and it's never gonna be enough. And yet, The other side of the truth is that the believer, ang isang totoong kristyano, will do good works in accordance with the law of God. Those are the two truths na pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Kaya ngayong hapon, ang topic natin would be the place of good works in a life of a Christian. Ano nga ba ang lugar ng good works sa totoong kristyano? Meron po tayong tatlong headings para sa sermon na to. The first heading is good works and the law. That's the first point. The second point is the good works and God's grace. Good works in the, in the sight or in the light of God's grace. And last, good works and true faith. So yun po yung tatlong points na meron tayo or tatlong headings that we will be talking about today. And before we proceed, let us all bow down our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and con- for continuously sustaining us all throughout this day, O oh God. Indeed, we can find rest in you. And as we come before you to hear your word more and to f- hear your word being expounded, O oh Lord, we ask that may you guide us, O oh Holy Spirit, not just to allow us to hear, not just to allow us to understand, but also to allow us to submit and uh, to embrace and to find joy and to be satisfied and to be fed by your word. We ask and we humbly come before you knowing that we ourselves are not worthy to hear your beautiful and divine words, but it is only by your grace that you have given us this truth. Be with us, O God, enlighten us and guide us all throughout this afternoon. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So yun po, let's proceed to the first point. Ang first point po, good works and the law. Ano ba ang lugar ng good works in the light or in reference to the law of God? Kung titingnan natin yung question 62 kanina, yung binasa natin sa Heidelberg Catechism natin, yung question 62, hindi siya isang tanong lang, para siyang hinate or dalawang tanong na pinagsama sa isang tanong. Yung first question is, why can't the good we do make us right with God? That's the first question. Why can't the good we do Make us right with God. And the second is, or at least help us make us right with Him. Or kung, pa- kung paano man makatulong. So kung titingnan natin or intindihan natin mabuti, kung, ma- kung, kung i-check natin kung sa Tagalog, sinasabi din, bakit yung mga bagay na ginagawa natin according or kung nanaaayon sa salita ng Diyos ay hindi pwedeng maging basihan para sa ating kal- kaligtasan. Bakit hindi pwedeng mag- maging basihan yon yung pagsunod natin sa salita ng Diyos? Yun yung first question. At pangalawang question sa question 62 is that kung hindi man pwedeng maging basihan, bakit hindi pwede na kahit man lang makatulong or maging factor or maging support or maging part siya ng pagiging basihan para sa ating kaligtasan? Yun yung dalawang portion ng question sa 62. And alam natin yung sagot doon at nabasa natin kanina yon That the reason why it is not possible, the reason why our good works cannot be even a part of righteousness before our God is that they would have to be perfect. That's the standard. 
when we're talking about good works, it has to be perfect. It takes absolute perfection to be able to offer such righteousness before the holy judgment of God. That's the standard. Yun ang standard na patuloy nating titignan. It must be com in complete agreement to the law of God. Ibig sabihin, it must be entirely perfect. Kung tayo ay mag-aalay ng mabubuting gawa sa Panginoon Diyos, it has to be on that absolute standard of perfection. At dito makikita natin na both in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament, Testament, it teaches that basic principle of obeying or when it comes to our works. Sabi sa Deuteronomy 26, ah, I mean, sorry, Deuteronomy 27, 26, yun yung first verse natin. Sabi sa Deuteronomy 27, verse 36, Cursed be anyone who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them. Again, cursed be anyone who does not conform the words of this law by doing them, and all the people shall say, Amen. That's Deuteronomy 27 verse 26. At yung verse na yon sa Old Testament ay ginamit din ni Paul sa Galatians 3 verse 10. Kinote din ni Paul to sa Galatians 3 verse 10. Sabi niya dito, in which in expound niya, For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. Ulit, lahat ng nagtitiwala or dumidepende sa pagsunod sa kautosan ng Diyos ay under a curse. Why? Kasi ito yung kinote niya at kinote nga niya yung sa Deuteronomy because cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written, written in the book of the law and do them. So yun yung sinasabi niya doon. Kasi nga, alam ni Paul at nilang ni Paul, alam nating lahat na ganun kataas yung standard that you will be accursed if you proclaim or claim to abide in it but you fail to do it. If you claim that you will abide in the law of God but at even a single hit, hint of mistake, you will fail and you will be accursed because of that. Kasi if you want to be righteous before a holy God on the basis of good works, you could, you would have to continuously do everything written in the book of law. Continuously following, continuously, consistently doing the work or the, the law of God. Lahat ng inuutos at kinokomand sa atin ng Panginoon. Mula sa simula ng ating buhay hanggang sa kahuli-hulihang hininga ng ating buhay. It has to be complete, it has to be perfect, it has to be consistent. Kaya pagdating sa standard of perfection, walang tinatawag na training period sa mga bago sa work, sa mga system, wala pa lang. Merong may certain training period or minsan yung tipo pwedeng may practice pa, pwede ka pang magkamali ng onte, may, may certain leeway pa. Pero dito walang ganun. Walang training period. Simula sa simula hanggang sa huli. We are expected. At hindi mo pwedeng baliin ang kahit isang command ng Panginoon pagdating dito. At alam natin lahat na pagdating sa ganong utos, pagdating sa ganong standard of absolute perfection, walang makakagawa nun. At walang nakagawa nun except one person. There is no one who was able to do that except except our Lord Jesus Christ. Walang ibang nakagawa doon, kundi ang ating Panginoong Jesus. He has, e he has ever kept each commandment of God and never broke a single one of His commandments. Tanging ang Panginoong Diyos lamang natin ang nakagawa doon. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, no one is perfect. There is someone who is indeed perfect and is continuously perfect in His life. In fact, we know that even our best works, sabihin na natin na, susunod tayo at alam natin hindi natin nagagawa perfectly o hindi natin nasunod lahat ng inuutos at kinokomand sa atin ng Panginoon. But kung mag, mag-focus tayo sa mga good works na ginawa natin, alam natin na even our best works in this life are all imperfect. Alam natin na kung mag, mag-focus tayo sa mga nagawa nating mabuti, sa lahat ng nagawa natin with all our best, when it, when it comes to our righteousness, when it comes to our obedience to the Word of God, alam natin na even on those best efforts of obeying God, the law of God, it is all or they are all imperfect because they are defiled by sin. Lahat yun dahil defiled by sin yung mga ginagawa natin. At, at alam natin yan, 
even sa experiences natin sa buhay, when we, we, when we contemplate to our lives, alam natin na may certain, at there will always be a certain imperfection sa lahat ng ginagawa natin. Kasi, kung titignan mo natin mabuti, pwede naman talaga tayo makagawa ng good works. Pwede tayo makagawa at makasunod mga bagay in accordance to what is good when it comes to works. Kasi kung tatalon tayo sa Lord's Day 33, kung tatalon tayo ng onte ng ilang Lord's Day, in which dadaanan din naman natin in the future, sabi sa Lord's Day 33 verse 91, ito yung, yung standard pag sinabing, paano mo ba masasabi na it is done as a good work? Sabi dito, good works are done, uh, number one, out of true faith. Pangalawa, if it, is, it, if it conforms to the law of God. And lastly, if it was done for the glory of God. So dun sa tatlong standards na yun, pwede naman talaga tayong makagawa na mababuting gawa. Sa totoo lang. The best example or one quick example is when we come together here and gather and worship during Lord's Day service. We come before the Lord out of true faith. That's why we gather here. We come before and we come together to confirm or to conform to the law of God because it is God who has commanded us to gather together in His day. And it was done all for His glory. Pero kahit sa ganitong panahon, alam natin na even sa pagpunta natin dito, our motives can be imperfect. Our, there could be challenges sa paglapit natin at pagpunta natin sa Lord's Day. Even yung sinasabi ni, ni Pastor Kirby kanina, na alam natin na paglapit natin dito, walang pupunta dito na perfect. Walang naka, pumupunta ng Lord's Day na kaya nilang sabihin na nakarating ako dito na wala akong na-miss na kahit na ano. Lahat tayo dito lumalapit with all humility because all of us have sinned. Even bago pa tayo lumabas ng bahay, marami na tayo naiisip. Bago pa makarating dito, marami na tayong na pwedeng makonsider ng mga bagay-bagay. At yun yung katotohanan doon. At kung titingnan natin yung heart natin, kung titingnan natin yung motives natin, doon natin makikita na even our motives can say that we are never pure. Even our motives, we can never say that even our motives are pure. Even if we try to seek and do things for the glory of God, Kung titingnan natin mabuti yung motives natin, meron at meron pa rin tayong kinoconsider para sa sarili natin. Meron at meron pa rin tayong nire-regard na what's in it for me if I do this? What's in it for me if I follow God? What's in it for me if I do something according to the law of God? We're concerned with ourselves when it, when it comes to our self-esteem, when it comes to our reputation, or even kung ano yung sasabihin ng ibang tao sa mga ginagawa natin na tama. Kaya sometimes naalala ko, even when I was in a evangelical church, madalas pag may konting ano, sasabihin ko, ah, praise God. Hindi, all for the glory of God, glory to God. Wow, praise God. Pero doon natin makikita na even in the simplest affirmation, even in the smallest encouragement, even in the smallest acknowledgement ng ibang tao, makikita natin na meron at meron pa rin matitrigger na pride or selfish tendency sa atin. Kasi ganun tayo ka-weak, ganun tayo katindi yung tendencies natin when it comes to sin, even on good works. So our own experience, ibig sabihin, even our conscience in itself can tell us that none of our works are absolutely perfect and in complete agreement with the law of God. Na alam natin na even tayo mismo kaya nating sabihin na wala ni isang bagay na mabuting gawa na kaya nating sabihin na it is absolutely perfect or it is absolutely incomplete agreement to the law of God. And it only confirms with what the Word of God has been saying or what the Word of God tells us. Kasi tulad nung binasa natin kanina, the Word of God tells us that our best works, now we're talking about best works again, the best works in this life are all imperfect and defiled with sin. And the reference verse that we have talked about or we have read about this is yung sa Isaiah 64 verse 6, yung binasa natin kanina sa Isaiah. Isaiah 64 verse 6. And then etong chapter nito, it talks about this is the part of Isaiah's prayer on behalf of Israel. Kasi this is a prayer of mercy and help for his people. Kaya nga kung tatalon tayo ng isa, akit tayo ng isa sa so verse 5, sabi dito, the first part of his prayer is that you meet him who joyfully works righteousness. 
Those who remember you in your ways. Nare-reflect nito yung, yung response ng Panginoon sa mga righteous people, sa mga matuwid na gawa tungkol sa Kanya. Pero, kinontradict niya yun sa reality kung ano yung Israel. Right after declaring that, kinontradict at pinakita niya, nare-reflect niya yung reality sa kung sino yung Israel or sino yung mga tao ng Panginoon. Sabi dito, Before you were angry and we sinned, in our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? Pinakita niya yung difference ng expectation versus reality when it comes to the, the standard of God. And doon tayo po apaso kung bakit sinabi ni Isaiah sa verse 6 yung nabasa natin kanina na we have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like polluted garment. Pag sinabing unclean dito, hindi yung, yung context na pinag-uusapan nila o yung expectation nila nung sinasabi na Isaiah yung unclean dito, hindi siya yung unclean na dahil hindi lang naligo or something. He's talking about, ang reference na dito is like a woman who is in, his, in her monthly period. Yung, yung isang babae na dinat na ng kanyang ng kabuanan. Hindi ko alam yun sa Tagalog. Yun. May, basta yung men, may menstruation. So yun yung, yun yung tinatawag nila or nire-regard nila during that time na merong time na they were considered unclean. And inihantulad sila sa ganun tao. And hindi lang yung, yung tao yung inihantulad inihan, sa kanila, but even their good works, ginawang parallel dun sa status ng isang unclean woman. Sabi dito, that all our righteous deeds are like polluted garment. Or in other translation, it's more common na they're considered filthy rags before God. When, when you talk about pol- polluted garment, yun yung tinatawag na menstrual cloths. Or sa panahon natin yan, pasintabi po, sa ano po yun, yung pads na ginagamit ng, ng, ng women. So, you own yung illustration or yung example na pinakita ni Isaiah about the good works of men that they will always be like filthy rags or polluted garments before God. Imagine the purpose of that cloth is for, for the needs of the woman. Now, even to the point na even if that cloth or that pad was able to do its job, it was able to do its purpose, it will never be acceptable to anyone else. That's the reality of it. Walang kayang magpaka, mag, magmalaki sa menstrual pad when it was done or when it, once it was applied. And it was like what it is in the eyes of God. Na kahit anong pagmamayabang natin sa good works, sa great works na meron tayo, it will never be acceptable to God because His standard is way, way far and way different from our standards. His standards is perfection. His righteousness is absolute. And we can never do that. Kaya doon tayo mapupush to the realization that we are to be humble before Him because we have nothing just like a pad. Wala tayong kayang ipagmalaki sa ating Panginoon. Kaya nga sinabi niya, sa sobrang humility, yung reflection ng, 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 niya sa Israel, we all fade like a leaf na walang-wala kami. And in our iniquity, sa mga kasalanan namin, like the wind, take us away. Ibig sabihin, kaya-kaya kaming dalhin at uh, i-influensyahan ng aming sinful tendencies. Ganun kami ka-weak. Ganun tayo ka-weak because of our sin. At dito makikita natin when God used and allow that illustration to be used by by Isaiah. Dito makikita natin na si, na sa Isaiah did not say that the evil deeds of Israel polluted them. Yung filthy rags na yun, hindi yun yung evil deeds. Hindi yung evil deeds yung sinasabi ni Isaiah doon. Ang sinasabi niya is speaking of the good works of those people. The best things they did, they were like filthy rags. And even so, the catechism, tulad ng binatsa natin kanina, is simply repeating the scripture when it says, even the very best we do in this life is imperfect and stained with sin. Even the best thing that we can do in this life is stained with sin. Kaya patuloy ko na alala yung tinuturo sa amin nung dati namin pastor na 
Okay lang yan, dadating yung panahon, makakabawi ka sa Panginoon. As if makakabawi tayo sa Panginoon. At doon ko nare-realize on how deceived I was. Tulad ng pinipreach kaninang umaga na akala mo may opportunity na makabawi ka bago ka makalapit sa Panginoon. Pero yun yung reality. Akala natin makakabawi. But it is all a lie. Tulad ng sinasabi kaninang umaga. It is all a lie. There is nothing we can do that can grant even a single merit before the Lord. There is nothing that we can do that can grant even a single point of merit before the Lord. At dahil dito, knowing that even the best things we do are imperfect and defiled with sin, therefore our good works, now it's established, therefore our good works can never be and cannot be even a small part or can never support or can never be a small part of our righteousness before God. And with that, think of the parable of the Lord na binasa natin kanina about the Pharisee and the tax collector. That's a good example and a good illustration and a good reality in a form of a parable na pinapakita ng Panginoon pagdating sa Pharisee and the tax collector. Nakita natin kanina at nabasa natin kanina na yung Pharisee, look at that example in a sense that the Pharisee stood there and told God how good he was. When he come to the to, when he came and for for to acknowledge God's presence and pray he came there blinded by his pride proclaiming how good he was he boasted to God tagmayabang pa siya sa Panginoon saying how he was not like other men ang comparison niya yung ibang tao He's not like yung hindi siya katulad ng mga robbers sa paligid niya. Hindi siya katulad ng mga evil doers sa paligid niya. Hindi siya katulad ng mga adulterers na ibang tao. At tinuro pa niya yung nandung isang tao na tax collector or even the tax collector in the, na present nung time yun. Sabi niya, buti na lang hindi ako katulad nila. That is his standard of what good is. Because he's comparing himself to other people. And he boasted out aloud. Hindi pa natapos doon. He boasted out aloud that his good works, he showed his good works, he has boasted his acts of piety, he has boasted of his devotion, and he has even boasted of his generous tithing. Ganun katinde yung pagmamalaki at yung pagiging bulag nung Pharisee na yun, nung lumapit siya sa Panginoon. And dito makikita natin na all these things, yung acts of piety, yung devotion, yung generosity, yung pagtatithe, they're all good. Totoo naman yun. They're all good works. They are indeed good works. But his downfall was that he thought that all these things done according to the law of God were part of his righteousness before God. Akala niya may bearing lahat ng yun. Akala niya sa pagmamalaki niya sa mga bagay na yun, ay may merit yun pag nilatag niya sa Panginoon. As if may factor siya. And we know what happened afterwards. We know that after all his boastings, God rejected him. Yun yung nangyari. And then come the other person in the character of the tax collector sa parable ng ating Panginoon. The tax collector was not in front He was not even in the center, but he was he stood far away from the attention of other people. He can't even look up to the heaven to pray. He can't even look up, but instead he beat his chest, his breast, and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. He knew that he had nothing to offer to God. Alam niyang wala siyang kayang ibigay sa Panginoon. He knew that even his best deeds are nothing and he was going to depend and he was not going to depend upon his works. Tulad ng ang galing eh. Tulad ng sinabi ni Pastor Kirby kanina. Wala tayong kayang ilapit sa Panginoon kundi yung confession lang natin ng ating kasalanan. Just like what the tax collector said here, have mercy on me a sinner. 
And sabi dito, he prayed in faith upon the free, forgiving grace of God. And the Lord said in this parable, I tell you that this man, the tax collector, rather than the Pharisee, went home justified with God. And the man who depended upon his work did not go home justified. But the man who had faith in God went home justified. And so we have reestablished that our good works cannot be our righteousness before God and not even the least part of it. At dahil po doon, napag-usapan na natin yung good works in the light of the law of God. Ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin yung good works in the light or in the standard of the God, of the grace of God. Pag-usapan naman natin yung second point natin. Good works and the gra- God's grace. Kasi kung tatalon tayo sa susunod na question ng ating, ating Heidelberg Catechism, sabi doon, How can you say that the good we do doesn't earn anything when God even promises to reward it in this life and next. Totoo yun. Kasi yun yung sinabi sa first part. How can you say that walang merit yun? Eh sinasabi dito na may reward na sinasabi ang Panginoon. Pa- Paano nga ba yun mangyari? Paano natin ma-harmonize yun? We have, been, we have established it that there is no merit when it comes to our good works. But then God is saying here that there is a reward when it comes to our good works. At pwede nating maisip na yung nagtanong ng question na yun ay yung Pharisee. Let's just all imagine na yung Pharisee na yung nagtanong. Kasi definitely alam na alam niya yung scripture when it comes to that. Na alam niya at narinig niya at nabasa niya that there is a reward when it comes to good works. And indeed the scripture teaches us that. Sabi sa Psalms, we will be reading some of the scriptures regarding the rewards of God when it comes to our works. Sabi sa Psalms 19, 9 to 11. Psalms 19, 9 to 11. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Verse 11, it says, Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Yun yung sabi sa verse 11. Sabi naman sa 58 verse 11 ng Psalms, Mankind will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God who judges on earth. Again, he's, it's speaking about, about that reward. Sabi rin sa Proverbs 25, 21 to 22, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. It, it means how we are to work and how we are to show good works. For you will be heaping, for you will heap burning coals on his hand, and the Lord will reward you. And in Matthew 6, 3 to 4, sabi dito, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And lastly, Hebrews 11, verse 6, And without faith it is impossible to please Him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. So it's very clear and it's very explicit here that God really indeed give reward. God promises rewards. If you live in obedience to God, you can expect God to reward you. That's the truth on that aspect. But the question is, paano natin i-view yun? Paano natin i-harmonize yun na natutunan natin kanina sa first point when it comes to this aspect? Kasi kung titingnan natin, para may conflict. Paano mo nasabi na, na ganito yung nangyari? Kasi pinag-usapan natin sa first point na walang merit ang kahit na anong good works. Pero at the same time, sinasabi naman sa sunod na question, sinasabi sa scripture na may reward yung good works. But as we look at it closely, we will not find it conflicting if we will consider what the scripture speaks about this. Sabi dito, although God promises to reward those who begin to live according to the commandments of God, this is a reminder for all of us. 
totoo na may sinabi dito na may reward sa mga bagay na nagagawa natin. This reward is a gift of grace, not of merit. This reward that God is talking about here is out of grace, not of uh, something that we have done. Lagi po natin katandaan ito na kahit nagawin pa natin lahat ng pinapagawa sa atin ng Panginoon, wala tayong karapatan. Again, kahit nagawin natin yung mga pinapagawa sa atin ng Panginoon, wala tayong karapatan or right to expect a reward. Even if we follow the law of God. Because the reality is we're only doing it because it is our duty to follow Him. So why would you expect a reward in the first place? Would you reward us as... Tagalogin ko na. Bibigyan mo ba ang reward isang, ang isang gunting ng, dahil nakap, nakapaggupit siya ng isang papel? No. You're expecting the, the scissor or yung gunting na mag, makagawa nun because that's its purpose. That's its function. However, God does promise a reward. That's the reality. But that reward is out of pure grace and has nothing to do with us still. We can harmonize the catechism in the scripture only through the grace of God. Everything is out of grace. Mga minamahal kong magulang at kapatid. The call to live with God, the call to live for God, and to, to call to live with God in obedience to Him is a gracious call. The gift of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ is a gracious gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit who makes us begin to obey the Lord is also a gracious gift. The ability to begin obeying the Lord, the ability to begin to really obey the Lord, not just out of compulsion, but even in thankfulness, in gratitude to obey the Lord, is also a gift of grace. And now, even the reward that God has promised upon our works is a gift of grace. Everything is by grace. It is not earned like nothing is earned but the gift of grace. Wala tayong matatanggap dito kundi yung, yung habag at yung grace na meron ng Panginoon na hindi natin, hindi karapat dapat para sa atin. And yet, a true reward. Because God loves to see us do good works. That's also a reality. He loves to watch us obey Him and His Word and His law. And He loves to reward us for obeying Him. Grace from beginning to end, mula sa simula hanggang sa huli. And as Ephesians 2 verse 10 says it, For we are His workmanship. This is the truth about this matter, about this work about the good works of his people. We are his workmanship, created in G Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk with him. That even our good works is not in us, but prepared for us beforehand in Christ Jesus. Grace from start to finish, front and back. At natapos na po natin yung first two points. Natapos na natin yung grace in the light of the law of God. Natapos na natin yung good works in the light of grace. And lastly, we will talk about good works in the light of true faith. Or good works and true faith. Kasi it has something in relation to the last question. Kasi ang huling katanungan ng ating catechism for today is that, but doesn't this teaching make people indifferent and wicked? Sa natutunan natin, hindi ba parang dangerous or medyo delikado yung ganun na nalalaman natin? Kasi if our good works can never, cannot be our righteousness before God, kung yung good works na ginagawa natin ay hindi naman makakamerit, makakamerit bilang righteous nat, righteousness natin sa Panginoon. And if our good works earns us nothing, tapos sasabihin pa na, if the reward that God promise is not earned but also a grace or a gift of God. Hindi ba, ped, hindi ba may tendency na maging careless tayo bilang mga Christians? Hindi ba pwedeng magkaroon ng tendency na maging complacent tayo or matake for granted natin yung katotohanan na natututunan natin ngayon through the uh, catechism and, in which explains the scripture? But the answer is no. 
The answer is no, says the Bible. And the answer is no, as we repeated in the teachings of the Catechism. The answer is no. Because it is impossible, again, it is impossible for a Christian to live carelessly. It is impossible for a true, again, it is impossible for a true Christian to be careless about good works. It is impossible for a true Christian to be careless about obeying the commands of God and about living out of thankfulness for God's free grace and favor. Kaya nga sinasabi sa sagot sa question 64, it says, No, it is impossible for those grafted into Christ by true faith not to produce fruits of gratitude. Iyon yung sitagot sa atin ng catechism. Yung faith na pinag-uusapan dito, yung faith na meron tayo ay hindi lamang tungkol sa ilang paniniwala na meron tayo. Hindi lang to tungkol sa mga doktrina na kaya nating ma-memorize at kaya nating intindihin. The faith that we have is anchored in Christ. The faith that we have is about embracing Christ. The faith that we have embraces Christ and makes Him our own. That faith is entering into a union with Christ. It's not an isolated faith na ikaw lang yun. When you talk about true faith, it is about us being united, being grafted to Christ in a deep relationship to the person and work of Christ. At napag-usapan natin yun during Lord's Day 7 na by true faith, we are grafted into Christ. Naalala ko, ako rin ata yung na-timing na, na sermon delivery pagdating doon. At kahit dito sa question 64, na pag-usapan din yun, na ang pagiging grafted into Christ. And yung image na yun ay yung image na nakita natin sa John 15 about the vine and the branches in which God is the vine and we are the branches. By true faith, we are grafted into Him. Dinikit tayo na hindi naman dapat talaga nakadikit doon. Pero idinikit tayo sa true vine. And as we live in Him and He in us, as we abide in Him, we will bear much fruit. And that is expected to a branch that is attached to the true vine. And as we, by true faith, remain in Christ, it is impossible for us Again, ang totoong nakakonek, ang totoong nakaabide kay Kristo, ang totoong nakadikit at nakalapit at nakayakap sa ating Panginoong Jesus. It is impossible for those people not to bring forth fruits. It is impossible na ikaw ay nakakonek sa branch tas wala kang hindi ka namumunga. It is impossible for you not to have good deeds. It is impossible for you not to obey. It is impossible for you to not have a heart of thankfulness. If you are indeed connected in the vine of Christ, it is impossible for us not to be happy and thankful for the salvation that we have received in Him. At ang sanga na hindi nakakapit kay Kristo Jesus ay namalalanta at matutuyo. Ang, to, ang mga sanga na hindi nakakapit sa Kanya ay mawawala ng buhay, matutuyo, malulundo, at ito ay puputulin at ilalagay sa apoy. Ang lahat ng hindi naniniwala, those who do not have the life of the Spirit of Christ in them will wither, sila ay malalanta, and they will face the judgment of God. However, those who do by true faith abide in Christ will bear much fruit. They will never take advantage the grace that they have received. Those who are truly abiding in Christ and are attached to the vine will never take for granted everything that they have received in Christ. They are in Christ and Christ is in them. And that's a reflection that we are to look and continuously to look on in our lives. Before we consider our good works, bago pa natin tingnan yung mga ginagawa natin, bago pa natin i-consider yung mga nagagawa natin karapat-dapat or tama according to the law of God, tingnan na muna natin yung sarili natin. If we are really indeed in Christ, and if Christ is really indeed in us, kasi that is what a true branch that is connected to the true vine is. And pangalawa, those who are attached to the true vine, they will bring forth fruits of thankfulness. And are you bearing fruits? Are we bearing fruits? Are we seeing the fruit of the Holy Spirit in us? Are we seeing the result 
or the outcome of a genuineness of our faith? Are we thankful with this life that we have? Are we thankful not just with this life, but with the eternal life that was given to us? Are we thankful for what Christ did for us? Are we thankful for the grace that we have received that we don't deserve? And yet maybe we are blinded. That's why we are not thankful. And they will begin to do good works. Good works is the fruit of our genuineness of our salvation. Do you obey the law of God? Not just out of formality, not just out of just because you want to obey, but out of joy. Do we obey God? Do we find delight in following Him? Do we find that joy and delight in submitting to His Word? And even on the opposite side of it, do we still obey, obey even if it is against the desires of our flesh? Tulad nung inexplain din kanina, that there is war in us, the war of our spirit and our flesh within us. Do we still find that joy and endurance to obey? Even if sometimes we fail, but still we witness how God is working in us. For the Spirit of Christ will be working in His people. And do you see the work of the Holy Spirit in you? Do you see how it works and how He works in our sin? How He works in our sanctification? How He works in our regenerated heart? For apart from Christ, apart from His work, we can do nothing. But as we remain in Christ, we show our love for Him by keeping His commandments. And so, my beloved families and friends, aking mga minamahal na magulang at kapatid, let us abide in Christ. Like a wild olive branch grafted into the vine which is Christ, let us remain in Him. Let us by true faith be fruitful Christians. Rejoice that Christ is working in you, bringing forth from you the fruits of faith. Specifically, the love, obedience, and thankfulness to God. And rejoice that God has promised to reward you for your good works. And that reward is again out of grace, undeserved favor from the Lord. But don't depend upon this, those works that being right with God. We are right with God only through Christ. The only way that we are being right before the Lord is only through the righteous work of Christ that is imputed to us. For our salvation, we depend only upon the obedience and sacrifice of Jesus Christ and nothing else. For our salvation, we depend only on the work of Christ and nothing else. In Him, we have all we need. In Him, we are righteous before God, heirs of everlasting life. In Him, we have all we need, everything, not, nothing lacking. Amen. Let's all bow down our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for continuously reminding us of the truth. And forgive us, O oh Lord, for our sinful desires and tendencies. <clears throat> that even in this season of our lives, we all know that we can never do anything that merits our salvation. <clears throat> that we are still fully dependent on him who offered his life and redeemed us from our sins. Teach us not to be proud, O oh God not to be blinded by our own sin. Discipline us and remind us that we are nothing and can do nothing apart from you. That we have nothing to offer, even the faith that we have came from you, O Lord. Our ability to repent and have faith is your work. Our ability to follow you is your work. Our salvation, this eternal life that we have is your gift a gift that is purely based on your grace and never on our merits. May you continue, O God, to transform us, strengthen our faith, and open our, our, our eyes so that we will be able to see more of your work in us. 
Remove the plank of sin in our eyes and give us a heart that is thankful, that is grateful before you. Give us true joy and delight in you. For us to acknowledge that it is only you that satisfies and you are enough. Set our eyes not on our works, O God. Never set, allow us, O God, to set our eyes on our works, but only to the atoning work of your Son. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we, may we all stand as we sing our song of consecration. We will be singing Our Christ, Our Hope, Our Heart's Desire. Makikita po natin yun sa hymn number 376. Again, 376. Our Christ, Our Hope, Our Heart's Desire. We will be singing verses 1 to 4. And as for our benediction, we will be reading 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.